for this week's discussion board, I am going to talk about labor markets and crime. And the first thing I want to touch on is youth work instability, which basically means that they believe that if a child is in the classroom and working all the time, that it's going to keep them from uh, going out and committing delinquent acts. Let's say a kid goes to school, and as soon as he gets off from school, he goes home and he works, and he works until about 7 or 8 p.m. He's not going to have time to go out and commit these acts. But something I do want to touch on is I feel like a kid can go to school and work and still have time to commit crime if he doesn't have a good family. If his family isn't there to watch him and support him, then he can find time to go commit that crime. And uh, in 1938, Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act, which basically said that uh, someone had to be at least 16 years old to work in an employment that was not agricultural. And um, they did, however, allow 15 and 14 year olds to work as long as it wasn't going to put them in like a health issue or a uh, health risk. And this is something that I believe that no matter the age, if the kid's 12 and wants to work, he should be allowed to work because I've worked since I was 13 and it's a great character builder and it's going to help these kids not fall into that uh, side of crime because they're going to want to work. They're going to want to do good. They're going to want to make money. So I feel like no matter the age of the kid, they should be able to work. And no, I'm not talking about a nine-year-old put them to work. No. But if they're a teenager, 13 and up, and they want to work, I feel like they should be able to work. Uh, in the mid-1980s, however, critics of the youth work movement had empirical data created and uh, it created uh, careful considerations of dangers and risks of adolescent work. And this is something else that I want to touch on. I don't feel like every job that an adolescent does is dangerous or puts them at risk. Yeah, if they're out like working construction at the age of 15, then yeah, they could be put in danger. But as long as these kids have jobs that are somewhat safe for their age, then there's no dangers or risks. So I feel like that empirical data that they're talking about is probably somewhat skewed because a job that an adolescent is in is less likely to be dangerous than, let's say, a 25-year-old working. So I feel like that data is not completely true because I can't think of any job that an adolescent would have that would put them at risk of anything. And uh, the next thing I want to touch on is uh, how they say allowing 16 year olds to work allows them to work more, spend more of their time at work. And due to this, they will commit less delinquent acts. So that's uh, basically what I touched on before. But if you put this 16 year old out working, he goes to school, he goes to work, he goes home. He's not going to have time to commit crime. Unless, like I said, his family isn't stable and then he could find ways to commit crime if he doesn't have a stable support system at home. Um, Samson and Labe suggested that work equals social control and social interactions. And this is basically saying that the people that this adolescent works with can become his friends. He can... Uh, build that social structure that could give him friends to keep him out of trouble. And um, I've seen a lot of people fall into the wrong like group and that leads them to commit crime. But if these kids can gather on to uh, good people and become friends with them like at work, then that can keep them out of trouble because when they're not working, they're going to want to hang out with their friends and it's going to keep him out of trouble. And the last thing I want to touch on is incarceration. And 70% of those arrested are high school dropouts. And I'm, I have seen this firsthand. A bunch of the people that I went to high school with are now behind bars because they dropped out. Or 
they finished at the bottom of their class and had no want to to go get a job. And um, also most of those that are arrested are unemployed. So they don't have the mindset of, I wanna go out and make something of myself. I wanna go out and um, succeed. And that leads them straight behind bars because they have nothing else to turn to. They have no job, no money, so they're living off selling drugs or co committing crime in order to live. And uh, one last thing, those convicted of felonies are seen to have unstable employment. So they could have a job, but let's say it's uh, like they own their own like yard mowing business or something, and they're not making what they need to survive or to live like bills, food, all of that, then they can also turn to crime to get even more money, even if they do have a job, even though it doesn't pay a lot.